fellow ISRO aspirants, ACE Engineering Academy going to provide ISRO series. Myself, Dr. Prem Kumar, faculty of ACE Engineering Academy. I am going to deal uh, ISRO series software engineering subject. About the software engineering subject, what are the questions which were asked in the previous years that we will discuss in detail. Before that, what is the syllabus of software engineering for ISRO aspirants that we will discuss in detail. ISRO software engineering syllabus, mostly the gate syllabus was considered as ISRO software engineering syllabus. So what the ISRO software engineering syllabus consists of? Just see here, information gathering. So various uh, sources, the information which is required for development of software system. Next is requirements and analysis, feasibility analysis, feasibility study. So what's the importance of requirements for development of any software system? Requirements should be gathered from the clients. Gathered requirements might have contradictions, ambiguity, incompleteness, those should be discarded properly. That is about requirements and on about requirements, many questions which was asked in the previous year. Coming to feasibility analysis, feasibility study. Before going to start development of any software system, feasibility analysis, feasibility study is supposed to be conducted, which decides whether the software system which is going to be developed, is it worthwhile or not? If is the project which was proposed, is it implementable or not? If we implement, can it run in benefit by the organization or not? All those thoroughly studied in this feasibility analysis process or feasibility study process, that is what the purpose of conducting feasibility study. Next, data flow diagrams, DFDs. What is the purpose of this DFDs? Data flow diagrams, flow of data within a system that is represented by data flow diagrams. Data flow diagrams were classified into various levels. Level 0 DFD, level 1 DFD, level 2 DFD, level 3 DFD. So till level 0, 1, 2, 3 best suitable for development of software system, whereas level 3 is more, most, which was more complex, right? And on this particular topic about DFD, uh, level 0 which represents context diagram. So that is uh, on that particular context diagram, level 0 DFD, which was the question which was asked in the previous year. About that we'll discuss in detail. Coming to UML diagrams, UML, one of the modeling language, unified modeling language, object oriented unified modeling language. If any designers, if they want to design a software system, using this object oriented UML unified modeling language, by using this language, they can model a software system. So about this particular UML diagrams, which was asked many times in the previous year questions. So what are the types of diagrams? UML diagrams were classified into how many categories? There were many questions which was asked, and we will discuss. Next, coming to software process assessment. So on this particular topic, questions were asked. So the purpose of this software process assessment is the software organization, software industries, which they are developing their projects, are those projects based on some standards or not? That will be assessed. So what are those standards? On those standards, the questions were asked in the previous years. That we'll discuss it anyhow, right? Coming to next, process life cycle. So what are the various process life cycle? Process, again, the questions were asked on various process models. So what are fall model, spiral model, various process model, the questions was asked in previous years. About those questions which we'll discuss in detail. Coming to Kokomo model. So what is the importance of what is Kokomo stands for? Constructive cost model. So about this Kokomo model, constructive cost model, about this which uh, we will discuss. So this constructive cost model which will uh, predict the cost or budget of the project and which will help to the project manager to schedule the project properly, to develop the project properly, to plan the project properly. So that is that way this Kokomo model will help. And on this Kokomo model, there were many questions which was asked in the previous years. About those uh, uh, Kokomo model related questions, we'll discuss it anyhow, right? Coming to decision table. So about this also, 
uh, some of the questions which were asked in the previous years. So what is the importance of this decision table? Decision table represents functional requirements of the, any software system. So about this decision table, we will discuss it anyhow. Coming to cyclomatic complexity. To calculate the complexity of the program or the application or the design part, that is flowchart. So the complexity of the application can be calculated by applying the cyclomatic complexity. On this particular topic, there were many questions which was asked. About that cyclomatic complexity, we'll discuss. Coming to planning and manage, managing the project. So how to plan the project? Who will plan? Projects can be planned by the project managers and uh, managing the project. So what is the need of managing? So if there is a the schedule the is lacking, that's supposed to be managed, right? And the budget was not sufficient, that's supposed to be adjustable, right? Manpower is not sufficient, that's supposed to be adjustable. So that is what managing the project, maintaining the project. About that, the questions were asked, we'll discuss. Coming to design. So to design a software system. So what are the design principles? What are the design characteristics? Was it? So what is cohesion, coupling? So questions were asked. About that, at anyhow, we'll discuss in detail. Coming to coding, implementation. So source code is given to you, right? So you have to construct the flow chart, means design part of your uh, program, your source code. So that was asked in the previous year questions that we'll discuss about testing. So if you want to perform testing process, so what is testing? Testing is the process of executing a program with the intent of finding errors. So there are various types of testing. So what is the purpose of testing? And then how we'll discuss and many questions were asked on this particular topic, testing, right? And coming to verification and validation. So what is the purpose of verification? What is the purpose of validation? About this, we'll discuss it anyhow. And coming to implementation. So implementation, so after generation of source code, uh, that is uh, implementation. So after implementation, is there any errors in it or not? That's supposed to be verified. And maintenance. So once the project was developed and delivered to the client, if they identified any minor changes, those are supposed to be repeated to this maintenance phase. On this particular topic also questions were asked. Software reliability and availability. Software reliability and software availability. So we know what is meant by reliability, what is meant by availability. Questions were asked, how to calculate the reliability of the uh, software application or software product. So what is the availability of the software application? That at anyhow we'll discuss uh, some questions were asked on this particular topics. So this is about the syllabus of uh, software engineering for ISRO aspirants, right? Now what is the weightage of this particular subject software engineering? So, so far from 2007 onwards, 2007 onwards till 2020. So in various years, 2007, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and so on, like 20, 2020. So what is the weight is? How many questions they were asked? So uh, here, in year wise, they had asked uh, around five questions to maximum they had asked nine questions. So some of the years they had asked five questions. And some of the years they had asked eight questions, seven questions. Maximum they had asked nine questions from the subject software engineering. So which plays major role for your success of ISRO, right? ISRO exam. So that's why you have to understand this subject from base and you can crack the ISRO exam and you can give service to the society, to the India. So that is what the importance of this particular subject. We will discuss what are the previous year questions which was asked by ISRO and we will discuss in detail so that we will get more and more clarity and which will give you chances of getting success in your ISRO exam. Right? Let us discuss the first question. The level of aggregation of information required for operational control. So what is the level of aggregation of information required for operational control? So there are here options. So first one is of detailed, aggregate, qualitative, none of the above. These are the options which were given. So what is the question? The level of aggregation of information required for operational control. For operational control, what is the level of aggregation of information required? That's a question, right? So these are the options, detailed, aggregative, qualitative, none of the above. The answer here is detailed, 
detailed level of aggregation of information is required for operational control. So the answer is detailed. A is the answer for this particular question. Right? So this question was asked in the year ISRO 2007. ISRO 2007. So answer is A. Right? So the level of aggregation of information is required. So that is detailed information is required. Right? So detailed information is required for operational control. So the level of aggregation of information required for operational control is detailed. Right? So this is the first question which was asked in the year ISRO 2007. Coming to second question, which of the following is not a UML diagram? Let's see. So UML diagrams, what is the importance of this UML? Briefly we had discussed. UML stands for Unified Modeling Language, one of the object oriented modeling language which is used for modeling the software system. Right? UML diagrams were classified into two categories. UML diagrams were classified into how many categories? UML diagrams were classified into UML diagrams were classified into two categories. Into two categories. UML diagrams were classified into two categories. What are those two categories? First one is of structural diagrams. First one is of structural diagrams. Second category is of behavioral diagrams. Behavioral diagrams. Right? What is the purpose of this structural diagram? Why as a designer has to model structural diagram for development of any software system. The purpose of structural diagram, structural diagrams were used for modeling the static view of a software system. If any stakeholder, if they want to know the static view of the software system, software project, then structural diagram helpful for them. Through structural diagram, any designers or any developers or other stakeholders, they can view the static, what is the static view of that particular software system or software project. So that is what the purpose of structural diagrams. Then coming to behavioral diagrams, what is the purpose of this behavioral diagrams? Behavioral diagrams were, which were used for modeling the dynamic view of a software system. So if any stakeholders, if they want to know what is the dynamic view of the software system, through these behavioral diagrams, they can understand the they can understand the dynamic view of a software system. That is what the importance of behavioral diagrams. Then what are the diagrams? UML diagrams comes under structural diagrams. Let's uh, list out. So first one is of class diagram. First one is of class diagram. Second one, object diagram. Third one is of component diagram component diagram. Fourth one is of deployment diagram. Deployment diagram. Right? Coming to behavioral diagrams. First one is of use case diagram. Use case diagram. Second one is of sequence diagram. Sequence diagram. Third one is of collaboration diagram collaboration diagram. Fourth one is of state chart diagram. State chart diagram. Fifth one is of activity diagram. Activity diagram. The purpose of each and every diagram is different. Right? So UML diagrams were classified into two categories. So if you want to answer the question, which of the following is not a UML diagram? Means you should know what is UML. UML diagrams were classified into how many categories? Right? Two categories. What are the structural diagrams? Structural diagrams are of four types, whereas behavioral diagrams are of five types. You should know. Then you can answer this particular question. Let's see the question. Which of the following is not a UML diagram? Now see the options here. Uh, first one. So use case, class diagram. Analysis diagram, swim lane diagram. So 
which of the following is not a UML diagram. Now observe here, use case diagram. So use case diagram, yes, it is a UML diagram. Class diagram, yes, class diagram is a UML diagram. Use case diagram, class diagram. Coming to analysis diagram, do we have anywhere analysis diagram in these two categories? No. Coming to swim lane diagram, again observe here. Swim lane diagram, do we have? But swim lane diagram, now observe. Here, activity diagrams, activity diagrams. Activity diagrams were modeled in two ways, with swim lane, without swim lane. So activities were uh, partitioned into what here? Uh, activities were partitioned into what here? Uh, different objects. So swim lanes, swim lane one, swim lane two, swim lane three, like this, two, three. This is swim lane one, swim lane two, swim lane three. Right? So that means to say swim lane diagram also one of the UML diagram that is activity diagram. Right? So that means to say what are the UML diagrams? Use case diagram, class diagram and swim lane diagram. Then what is the question which was asked here? Which of the following is not a UML diagram? Analysis diagram is not a, analysis diagram is not a, what here? UML diagram. The answer is C. So this is what the, uh, what here concept which you supposed to, right? So the answer is, which this question was asked in the year, ISRO 2007, right? So C, use case, class, swim lane diagrams are AUML diagrams. Only analysis diagram is not UML, right? Coming to question number three, which of the following is an approach to software process assessment. So what are the software process assessment standards available? That we'll see. Which of the following is not an approach to software process assessment? SPICE, ISO, International Standard Organization. That is one of the standard which was used for process assessment. Means, so and so software industry or organization which is developing a project. If they are developing a project, are they following this particular standard or not? If they are following this standard, means their project is maintaining quality, which can be satisfied by the client. So, which can assess the, what here? Which can assess the standard of that particular project, right? And coming to standard CMMI assessment method for, next one is, uh, assessment method for process uh, improvement. Next, ISO 9000-2001. So CMMA also one of the process assessment uh, standard method which can assess the project standard, whether the organization is following the CMMA standard or not. CMMA stands for here, Capability Maturity Model Integration, one of the process assessment standard. SPICE also one of the process assessment standard, whereas ISO 9001-2000 also one of the process assessment standard. ISO stand for International Standards Organization, one of the process assessment, process improvement standard, or process assessment standard. So if so and so organization or industry, is it following this standard or not? Are they developing a project based on this standard which is specified by this ISO 9001-2000 or not? If they are following, if they are developing a project based on this ISO 9001-2000 standards, then that particular organization or industry will be certified by ISO 9001-2000. Right? So that is what the importance of software process. That is the importance of software process assessment. That's the importance of software process assessment. Software process assessment. Then which one? The question is which of the following is not an approach to software process assessment? IEEE 2000 2001 is not the software process assessment standard. So the answer is D here. The answer is what here? Answer is D, right? This question was asked in the year. ISRO, Indian Space Research Organization. ISRO stands for Indian Space Research Organization, which was asked in the year 2007, right? So answer is D, right? So the correct answer is IEEE 2000-2001 because, because the SPICE CMMI right, as well as ISO 9000-2001 or all the process assessment standards, whereas IEEE is not a process assessment standard, right? Coming to next question, coming to next question. What is the next question? Let's see. Next question, 
a physical DFD specifies. DFD stands for data flow diagram. DFD stands for what here? Data flow diagram. Data flow diagram. DFD stands for data flow diagram. Right? What is the importance of this DFD? DFD represents flow of data within a system. Right? So, DFDs were classified into level 0 DFD, level 0 DFD, level 1 DFD, right? level 2 DFD, level 3 DFD. Right? Now, the point here is, what is the importance of these DFDs? So, the entire software system is supposed to be represented as a single process that can be represented by this level 0 DFD. Level 0 DFD is also called as context uh, model, context model, context level DFD we call it as. That means to say entire software system is represented as a single process that is abstract representation of the software system. So, software system was not described in detail. Is it entire software system is represented as a single process? Right? That is abstract representation. So, is it best suitable for development of a software system? No. Why? Because the developers, designers, they need more detailed description of the software system for development. Is it? So, that is why level 0 DFD is what here? Abstract representation of a software system. Means entire software system is represented as a single process. That is not best suitable. Then what is the solution? That is why level 1 DFD was represented. That means to say, dividing the single process of a software system into multiple sub-processes means giving little bit more details. That is what level 1. Again, the designers, they need more detailed the, what description of each and every module, each and every component. So, what is solution here? That is why level 2 DFD was, uh, what was introduced here. So, what is the importance of level 2 DFD? Level 2 DFD is giving more and more details than level 1 DFD means the designers, they need more detailed representation of software system that is possible by level 2 DFD. So, till this level 0, level 1, level 2, which can be followed by the designers, by the designers to design a software system, which will give more details about the software system. Coming to level 3, which is giving more and more detail, but it is complex, difficult to model, difficult to design, difficult to maintain, difficult to understand. That is a problem with level 3 DFD. Is it clear? Right. So, a physical DFD specifies what here? What processes will be used? Who generates data? Who processes it? What each person in an organization does? Which data will be generated? So, a physical DFD specifies what here? Who generates data and who processes it? So, this is what the answer. Right? So, physical DFD specifies what here? who generates data and who processes it. So, this is what the answer with the question was asked in the year is so 2007 answer is B, physical DFD specifies actual flow of physical documentation and depicts how the system will be implemented, depicts how the system will be implemented. The processes represent the program, right, program modules and manual procedures. The data stores represents the physical files and databases manual files. Coming to next question. In a UML diagram of a class, so just now we had listed out UML diagrams were classified into two categories. So one of the diagram is what here? Class diagram. Class diagram, right? Class diagram. So which comes under structural diagram. So, UML diagram, class diagram comes under structural diagram. In UML diagram of a class, state of object cannot be represented. State is irrelevant. State is represented as an attribute. State is represented as a result of an operation. Now, see here. So, what is the graphical representation of class in UML? Rectangle box. Rectangle box. Graphical representation of class in UML, right? rectangle box, right? So, any class consists of three compartments. How many compartments? Three compartments. So, what is the first compartment? Class name. First compartment consists of class name. Second compartment consists of what here? Attributes. 
attributes attributes third one consists of operations third one consists of operations right so any class consists of three compartment first one is of class name attributes and operations right i'll give with simple example right so let's take for banking application banking application one of the class name is atm user we are all atm users am i right so what are the attributes for atm user name of the atm user is it address of the atm user mobile number of the atm user etc there were many attributes what are the operations atm user can perform with atm machine withdraw money is it withdraw withdraw money deposit so atm user can deposit money in their account check balance there are many operations change pin etc right so this is what class name attributes operations atm user is a class name attributes operations now the question which was asked here is in a ml diagram of a class state of object cannot be represented state is irrelevant state is represented as an attribute this is what he answered state is represented as an attribute in class diagram right so the answer is this right so this is what the answer for the fifth question this question was asked in the year isro 2007 so answer is c right the unified modeling language is a general purpose developmental modeling language in the field of software engineering that is intended to provide a standard way to visualize the design of a software system so uml is used for modeling a software system why uml became popular because which is one of the object oriented modeling language that mean to say if you want to design a software system that is in the form of objects and classes object and uh, class size is small so easily designable the designers easily they can design in the entire software system in the form of objects and classes why because class and object size is small they can easily design they can easily understand they can easily implement they can easily test they can easily replace they can easily reuse these are the advantages with uh, object oriented software system so any software system if you want to model that is in the form of object and classes uml is required for that that's why uml became popular right coming to no next question which of the following models is used for software reliability which of the following model is used for software reliability so what is the purpose of reliability first of all what is reliability so failure free operation of a software system we call it as reliable how can you say that software system was developed or software project was developed to deliver to the client what is the reliability of that particular developed product or project right that mean to say the delivered product or software project which is giving services to the users in a failure free manner without failing which is giving continuous service such product or such, such projects we call them as which is maintaining reliability which is maintaining reliability failure free operation of a software system means without failing it's giving continuous services such software products we call them as maintaining reliability right the question is which of the following models is used for software reliability waterfall model no musa no kokomo no so the purpose of these are different this is uh, waterfall model if you want to develop a software system so one of the uh, prescriptive process model kokomo constructive cost model so if you want to estimate the budget is it then supposed to go kokomo musa the purpose is different relic model which was asked in the year isro 2007 answer is here d d is the answer so what is importance of this model relic model this model predicts fault detection fault detection over the life of the software development effort and can be used in conjunction with the other prediction techniques so that is what the importance of this uh, model right uh, what's importance of this musa model this prediction technique is used to predict Uh, prior to system testing what the failure rate will at the state of system testing and what's important constructive cost model the constructive cost model was uh, developed as a model for estimating effort so what is the effort of the project what is the cost of the project what is the schedule for software project which will help to whom here software project managers so uh, this provision kokomo model is it so 
So once they apply Kokomo model, which can estimate what might be the cost, what might be the schedule, how many manpower teams required. So that idea will be given by this Kokomo model to project manager based on that project managers, they can plan better plan for development of software system. So Kokomo model helps to the project managers to give better plan. That is what the purpose of Kokomo model, constructive cost model. Waterfall model, just now we had discussed one of the prescriptive process model. So waterfall model, one of the uh, traditional old software process model, having many drawbacks with this. So waterfall is the software development life cycle model, which depicts the phases of conception, initiation, analysis, and design, uh, co construction, testing, deployment, and maintenance. So that is what we call it as waterfall model. Using waterfall model, framework activities can be used for development of a software system. What are those framework activities here? communication, planning, modeling, construction, deployment. So waterfall model is one of the oldest software process model and which is one of the linear sequential process model. So that uh, drawback with waterfall model is the time required for development of software system is too high, right? That's why waterfall model is not preferable for development of software system because it's a linear sequential model and one of the oldest software process model, right? And coming to next question, to execute all loops at their boundaries, and within their operational bounds is an example of DAS. To execute all loops at their boundaries and within their operational bounds is an example of, is it a black box testing or alpha testing or recovery testing or white box testing? This question was asked in the year ISRO 2007. So to execute all loops at the boundaries and within operational bounds is an example of what here? So loops, is it? Loops were available in where exactly? Just observe the point in source code, right? If you want to generate source code, is it loops? So for loops, while loops, do while loops, is it conditions which belongs to your source code? So which type of testing is it which is relevant to source code? Twisting of source code, testing of structure of your application. Which type of testing belongs to testing set of inputs, testing set of outputs that we have to observe here. So black box testing, alpha testing, recovery testing, white box testing. Let me discuss in detail here. Let's this, this is what you are a software application. Software application. This is a software application. Software application, right? This is the developer software application, right? Now, you, now the testers, if they want to test this developer software application, they have to pass what here? Set of inputs. Set of inputs were processed by this developer software application, was it? And which is going to produce some set of outputs. Whether the given set of inputs and whether the produced set of outputs correct or incorrect, that will be determined by applying which testing? Black box testing. Which testing? Black box testing. That is what the purpose of black box testing. Whether the given set of inputs, are those correct or incorrect? Whether the uh, produced set of outputs correct or incorrect, that means to say testing the behavior or functional requirements of a software system which comes under black box testing. In black box testing, testing set of inputs, testing set of produced outputs that which comes under black box testing, alpha testing, right? So what's the importance of alpha testing? So alpha testing, the purpose is when the project is under development, if it is completed under 70% of project was completed. So alpha testing can be done uh, at the developer side in the presence of few customer representatives, right? That is what the purpose of alpha testing. Recovery testing, recovery testing is nothing but what here? Already the product was tested, is it? If any component or if any error occurred, is it, is it if anything missing that's supposed to be recovered through this recovery testing. Coming to white box testing, what is white box testing? Testing this structure of the application, testing the source code of the application, testing the design part of the application, testing the flow chart of the application, flow chart of the application. All these comes under white box testing. Testing the white box testing. In white box testing, under this white box testing, testing the source code of the application, testing the source code of the application, testing the structure of the application, testing the uh, flow chart of the application, all these comes under 
white box testing. Just now we had discussed it. To execute all loops at their boundaries and within their operational bounds is an example of what here? Loops are available where here? Loops are available with source code of your application program, structure, flowchart. That's why, what is the answer here? To execute all loops at their boundaries and within their operational bounds is an example of white box testing. This is the answer, right? So answer is D. So black box testing, just now we had discussed it. Functional requirements of a software system, right? And coming to alpha testing, just now we had discussed it. Seventy percent of the, uh, if the project is completed, seventy percent, which can done at developer side. Alpha testing can be performed at developer side. Recovery is again at system testing. That forces the system fail and verifies that recovery is properly performed or not. That is what we had discussed. White box testing. Only white box testing has access to codes. That is loops. Just now we had discussed it, right? And next question. A rule in a limited entry decision table is a dash. So row of table consisting of condition entries, uh, row of the table consisting of a action entries, or column of the table consisting of conditions, uh, entry, condition entries and the corresponding action entries. Column of the table consisting of condition uh, uh, of this tab. So first of all, what is decision table? Any decision table consists of, we'll discuss about this. Decision table consists of, decision table consists of four areas, four areas. What are those four areas? First one is condition stub, condition stub, condition entry, condition entry. Right? Condition entry. Action stub, action entry, action action entry, right? So which consists of four areas. Now what is the uh, decision table structure? Decision table structure, let's see here. So this is what decision table structure, right? Decision table structure. So which consists of condition A, condition B, condition C, condition D, action 1, action 2, action 3, right? And which consists of here rules also, right? So what are those rules here? Rule 1, Rule 2, Rule 3, and Rule 4, right? Rule 4, right? Now observe. So condition A under rule one might be yes, might be no, right? Yes, no. Condition B, no. Immaterial, yes, no, no, no. Immaterial, yes, right? Yes. No, 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 right? So condition action one, yes, yes, no, no, yes, no, yes, yes, no, no, no. This is what the structure of the decision table. This table represents what here? Structure. Structure of the decision table. Structure of the decision table, right? This table represents, this is what the structure of the decision table, right? Structure of the decision table. 
right? Now, which area here? Condition stub. This is what this part we call it as condition stub. Condition stub. Condition A, B, C, D. And this area we call it as condition entry. Entry. Right? This area we call it as action stub. Action stub. Those are action 1, 2, 3 stub. And which area here? This area we call it as action entries. Action. Action entry. Action entry. Right? Now observe carefully here. So a rule in a limited decision table, this is part of a decision table, right? is a row of table consisting of condition entries. Do we have row condition, ent uh, condition uh, entries? Row of table consisting of condition entries. A row of the table consisting of action entries. Row of table consisting of action entries. No action entries were here. Columns. Column of the table consisting of condition entries column of the table consisting of condition entries and the corresponding action entries. This is what action entries. So rows consisting of, uh, that's it. So uh, uh, a column of the table consisting of condition entries, column, condition entries. So one, two, three, four, right? So column of the table consisting of condition entries and the corresponding what here column, action entries. So condition entries, action entries, right? So first one row of the table, that's wrong. A row of the table consisting of action entries, that's wrong. So column of the table consisting of condition entries as well as corresponding action entries. So the answer is this, C. Column of the table consisting of condition stub. No, columns, not rows were having condition uh, stubs, right? That is also wrong here. So the answer is what? C. The answer is C. Which was asked in the year is 2007. This concept is required. If you want, if you want to answer this question, first you should understand what is decision table, what is the structure of the decision table. And here, yes, so under condition A, rule one, yes. Is it? When can the action one will take place here? Yes means, so under uh, action one under rule one, is it? When uh, action one under rule one, what should take place here? Is it under condition A, yes. Condition B, condition C, no. Whereas condition D, yes, then only action one under rule one will take place. What about this I? Neither yes nor no. Immaterial case means improper case. Is it? Improper condition. That is what immaterial. Again, it's uh, again, uh, that's a, again uh, about immaterial case. Again, one more uh, concept again, right? So it's neither yes nor no. That means to say improper, immaterial case, improper condition. That's supposed to be immaterial so case, supposed to be converted as material case. Means, is it? So th that means to say material case is nothing but either yes or no but should not be improper, that should supposed to be converted. Then only the testers, they can perform the testing process for the given test, uh, decision table properly, right? Uh, the answer is C, right? And column of the table consisting of, just now we had discussed, decision table is an ex excellent tool used in both testing and requirements management. Uh, essentially, it is a structured exercise to formulate requirements when dealing with complex business rules. Decision tables are used to, uh, Use it to model complicated logic, right? Coming to next question, activities which ensure that the software that has been built is traceable to customer requirements is uh, uh, covered as part of this verification. Activities which ensure that the software that has been built is traceable to customer requirements is covered as part of, is it verification, validation, maintenance, or modeling? So activities which ensure that software that has been built. So developed software, developed software and client requirements, client, client what here? Requirements, client requirements, client expectations, client expectations, expectations. So developed software product, product. If it is based on the client expectations, this process we call it as verification. The software product or software, software project or software 
product if it is going to be developed if it is developing based on the client requirements then this process we call it as verification whether the software project which is going to be developed is it based on the client requirements or not that verification process we call it as here verification then what is validation the developed product is it based on the client expectation client requirements is it client requirements client needs client expectations that process we call it as what here validation so activities which ensure that the software that has been built means already developed and now whether the developed product is it based on the client expectations client requirements or not checking this process which comes under validation the developed product is it based on the client requirements or not the developed product is it based on the client needs or not the developed pro product is it based on the uh, client expectations or not uh, this process we call it as validation so the answer is d then what is verification the project which is going to be developed is it based on the srs document or not what is srs software requirement specification document what this srs consists of client needs client requirements is it client needs client requirements so that is what the importance of what uh, uh, validation right and validation refers to testing the software as a complete product verification is checking the product with uh, respect to specifications at the end of the page a testing method which is normally used as the acceptance test for a software system is regression testing integration testing unit testing system testing a testing method which is normally used as the acceptance test for a software system is testing method which is normally used as the acceptance test so which one is comes under here acceptance test here so which comes under system testing right so the answer is d right so what is the importance of unit testing testing small piece of a software source code right which comes under unit testing integration testing means here dividing this large complex software application into modules and testing those modules uh, 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 and uh, dividing it and uh, testing those modules again integrating those modules which comes under integration testing coming to system testing system testing is done with a full system implementation and environment to determine whether the system meets all requirements uh, 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 it comes under system testing regression testing rerunning the test we call it as regression testing coming to a context model of the software can be shown by drawing a level 0 dfd level 1 dfd level 2 dfd a level 3 dfd so context model we had discussed briefly previously so a context model of a software can be shown by drawing a level 0 dfd level means abstract representation of a software system can be represented with level 0 dfd that's the answer right which was asked in the year isro 2011 the answer is a a context model coming to the below figure represents which one of the following uml diagram for a single sensation of an online chart system so this is what the activity diagram any activity diagram will start with initial state which will end with final state and these are all various activities when some event is occurred some operation will take place transition is triggered from login state to send state again some event has occurred here and when event is occurred some operation has performed some condition has satisfied that's why transition is triggered from send to logout state so this diagrammatic this diagram represents activity diagram in uml so which diagram package activity class diagram sequence diagram the answer is activity diagram which was asked in the year ISRO 2011, answer is D. Uh, given diagram in the question is activity diagram. Coming to next question, black box software testing method focuses on the, uh, what here, boundary condition of the software, control structure of the software, functional requirements of the software, independent parts of the software. We had, we, we just know we had discussed black box testing white box testing black box testing for purposes to test the set of inputs and to test the given set of outputs right that means to say black box testing which comes under functional requirements of a software system functional requirements of a software system which was asked in the year isro 2011 the answer is c right 
So white box testing focuses on control structure that we already discussed, is it? Whereas black box testing uh, focuses on functional requirements of a software system. And coming to Warnier diagram enables the analyst to represent class structure, information hierarchy, data flow, state transition. So which represents here information hierarchy, Warnier diagram. This was asked in the year ISRO 2011, answer is B. So Warnier diagram enables analysts to represent information hierarchy in a compact manner. So it is also referred to as the Warnier ORR diagram. It is a graphic charting technique used in software. Coming to next question, what is the cyclomatic complexity metric uh, of the following control flow graph? So just see, this is what the given control flow graph, cyclomatic complexity. Cyclomatic complexity can be calculated. Complexity can be calculated. E minus N plus two. So number of edges, one, two, right, three, four, five, six, seven. Number of nodes, one, two, three, four, five, plus two. So what is your cyclomatic complexity here? Cyclomatic complexity for the given graph is four here, right? So what is the answer here? Four is the answer, right? Which was asked in the ISRO 2011, right? Answer is B in cyclomatic complexity. This is for the formula. So P here, uh, decision points, only always one. Decision point is always one, right? So the number of edges, number of nodes for the given graph, point is one, right? So this is the answer. Right, and coming to what is the cyclomatic complexity of a module which which has 17 edges and 13 nodes? So cyclomatic complexity. What is the formula for cyclomatic complexity? The formula for cyclomatic complexity e minus n plus two e minus n plus two. The number of edges 17 minus number of nodes 13 plus two. So four plus two, six. So what is the answer here? Six, six is the answer, cyclomatic complexity, which was asked in the year ISRO 2013, right? Coming to which of the following types of coupling has weakest coupling? So we know what is meant by coupling, what is meant by cohesion. When the designers, they want to design a software system, right? So cohesion coupling, about this we have to dis discuss, right? Coupling. Let's take, these are two modules, module one, module two. If both modules were depending on each other while performing an operation, then we call it as coupling. If the module M, which is independent while performing operation, which is not depending with any other modules, we call it as cohesion. So for to design a better quality software system, then cohesion should be high, whereas coupling should be low. So which of the following types of coupling has the weakest coupling? Which of the following types of coupling has the weakest coupling here? Weakest one here is, uh, just see, Mises coupling, just which was asked in the year, ISRO 2013. So coupling in the uh, order from worst uh, coupling to least co coupling, types of coupling. So tight, loose coupling, is it? So these are all, so that is what? Mises coupling, Mises coupling is the weakest coupling. Coming to which of the following testing methods uses fault simulation technique? So unit testing, beta testing, stress testing, mutation testing, which uses what here? Uh, uh, fault simulation technique, so which was asked in the year ISRO 2013, answer is D, right? Mutation technique. Consider the following pseudocode. This is what the given pseudocode, right? So for this pseudocode, is it, uh, what is the cyclomatic complexity? That means for this pseudocode here, uh, flow chart supposed to be drawn. Right? So what is the cyclomatic complexity? Just observe here, this is what the drawn flow chart, this is the condition, right? So which consists of how many nodes, how many edges here? So just observe here, which consists of number of nodes, number of edges, the formula is E minus N plus two, number of edges, number of nodes, right? So based on this here, edges, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right, eight, nine. Right, so uh, it's just one, this is one, two, three, four, five, 
6, right, 7, 8, right, is it, yeah, so 8, 8 and number of edges, one, nodes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 plus 2, so answer is 4, now observe, what is the answer here for this? So answer is, for this answer is 4, C is the answer, right? Uh, which of the following is not a maturity level as per capability maturity model? So repeatable is not a, capa is it not a maturity, capability maturity model? So which was asked in the year ISRO 2014, right? So remaining all are maturity model. So optimizing, managed, defined, repeatable, initial, right? So the test should used to perform unit testing on a module could over uh, cover 70% of the code. So how much code was tested here? 70%. What is the rela uh, reliability of the module if the probability of success 0 0.9? Uh, what is the here? Testing part is 70%, right? Then what's the answer here? Just observe. So the answer here is 70% of the code is tested. So probability of success is 7.5. So test testing uh, probability for tested part of SP code is 0 0.7. Then success is what here? 0 0.95, right? Then both events are independent. So probability of E1 intersection E2, probability of E1 into probability of E2, 0 0.7 into 0 0.95, 0 0.665. So what is the answer here? 0 0.665, 665. And uh, for a software project, the spiral model was employed. When will the spiral stop? So when the spiral model going to stop? When the product is retired, is it? Then only the spiral model will be stopped, right? The answer is A. And what is the purpose of spiral model? To, uh, to identify risk, to resolve risk. That is what the purpose of spiral model. Alpha and beta testing are forms of what here? Acceptance testing, integration testing, system testing, uh, which testing here? So acceptance testing, alpha and beta testing. So alpha testing can be done at developer side, whereas beta testing can be done at uh, uh, customer side, right? So here 70% of the projects once complete, al alpha testing will take place. When the 90% of the projects once complete, then beta testing will take place. And coming to the extent to which the software can continue to operate correctly despite the in uh, introduction of invalid input is called as reliability, robustness, fault tolerance, portability, robustness. This is the answer, right? Which was asked in the year ISRO 2016, answer is B, right? Coming to uh, which, of, which one of the following is a functional requirement? Which one of? Maintainability is not a functional requirement, portability is not a functional requirement, robustness is not a functional, the answer is none of the mentioned, which was asked in the year ISRO 2016, answer is D, right? Coming to configuration management is not concerned with uh, uh, controlling changes to the source code, uh, choice of hardware configuration for an application, controlling documentation changes, maintaining version of software. The answer is choice of hardware configuration for an application is the answer, which was asked in the year ISRO 2016, answer is of D, right? Coming to uh, Next question, a company needs to develop digital signal processing software for one of its newest inve inventions. The software is expected to have 2,000 lines of code. The company needs to determine the effort in person month needed to develop this software using the basic Okomo model. So the multiplicative factor for this is model is, so here, what is the lines of code here? 2,000 lines of code, LOC, converted as KLOC, 2,000 lines of code by what here? Uh, uh, 2,000 lines of code. Is it 2,000? 20,000 lines of code, right? By 1,000. So how much we'll get here, right? So uh, 20 KLOC, 20 KLOC. And what are the factors here? So the factors which were given here is A. A is here, coefficient 2.2, whereas B is equal to how much which is given here? 1.5. Then what is the answer for this, which was asked in the year ISRO 2016, E is equal to, A is equal to KLOC. What is the value of A here? Uh, A value is 2.2, 2.2 into 20 into, uh, what is the value which was taken, what is the value which was taken here? So B value, 
V value which we had taken here is 1.5, right? 1.5. So 1.5, A value is 2. So here 2.2, 20 into 1.5. So we'll get the answer. So what is the answer which we got here is the answer which we got uh, just see here, A K L O C. So the answer is 196.7. So the answer is for the uh, this question is 196.7. Answer is A. Answer is A. All right. So next question. In the spiral model of software development, the primary uh, primary uh, determination determinant in selecting activities in each iteration is what here? Uh, iteration size, cost, adapted process such as rational unit fit, risk, risk is the answer. Risk is the answer. And coming to which of the following VML uh, 2.0 diagram captures the behavior aspects of the system. So which diagram captures here behavior we already identified, use case diagram, activity diagram, state mission diagram. Answer is B, right? So the answer is B. And uh, coming to which of the following is associated with the objects? So state, behavior, identity, all of the above, which was asked in the year 2017, right? Next, capability maturity model is a methodology for it to develop and refine organization software development process. Next, which of the following is, uh, which of the following is, which of the following is, not a life cycle model. So which one is not a life cycle model here? Spiral is life cycle, prototype is life cycle, YFL model is life cycle, whereas capability maturity model is not life cycle, answer is D, right? So coming to next, uh, in software maintenance, tackling the changes in the hardware or software environment where the software works is what here, adaptive maintenance. So which was asked in the year, ISRO 2017, right? Which, which product matrix gives the measure of the average length of words and sentences in the document? So fog index, which will give, right? Fog index, which will give. And next question, in the context of modular software design, which one of the following combination is desirable? So high cohesion and low coupling is desirable to design a software system. This question was asked in the year, ISRO 2017. So answer is B. Uh, consider the following. So what is here condition coverage? Condition coverage, white box testing. Right, condition coverage, white box. Equivalence class partitioning, black box testing. Volume, uh, volume testing here, performance testing. Beta testing, system testing. So that's the answer here, right? So answer is what here? A. Uh, next one is, in unit testing of model, it is found that for a set of tests at the maximum 90% of the code alone were tested with the probability of success is 0.9, the reliability of the model is what here. Let's see here. The code which is tested is 90%, the probability of success is 0 0.9. Both the things were independent. Let's see, both were independent. Both were independent. So success is 90%, 0 0.9. Probability of uh, testing, the probability of tested testing picked is 0 0.9, whereas probability of success is 0 0.9, then both were independent. So what is the uh, reliability of the module is 0 0.81. So 0 0.9 into 0 0.9, 0 0.81, right? The function point metric is used for the purpose. What is the purpose of function point? So to calculate the uh, first one is calculate the user requirements, calculate from the lines of code, calculate from the software complexity. This is for the purpose. To calculate the complexity of a software system, function points can be used. That is for the purpose which was asked in the year. ISRO 2018, the purpose is that, right? Next is the lower degree of cohesion is kind of what here? So lower degree of uh, cohesion is what here? Logical cohesion, coincidental cohesion. So answer here is coincidental cohesion. Answer is B, right? So this is for the order, low to high. Next, uh, regression testing is primarily related to which testing here? Regression testing is uh, uh, related to functional testing, retesting, uh, 
So the answer is A here. So regression testing is nothing but rerunning the test. Already you tested, still if any errors were there, supposed to be retested. That's for the purpose of regression testing, right? And coming to next question, what is the availability of the software with the following reliability figure? So mean time between failure is 20 days. Mean time to repair is 20 hours. So convert it. So 20, uh, just observe. So what is the, uh, what is the question which was asked here? What is the availability of the software? The formula for availability of the software. Mean time to, uh, fa mean time between failure by, mean time between failure, mean time to repair. Just observe here, availability of the pharma, mean time between failure by mean time between failure plus mean time uh, to repair into 100. Now, convert these days into what here? Uh, hours. Why the point here is mean time to repair 20 hours. That's why mean time between also supposed to be converted into hours. Right? So 20 into 24, we'll get the value 480 hours, right? And the formula for availability is mean time between failure uh, by mean time between failure into uh, plus mean time to repair into 100. So we'll get 96% is the availability is the answer, right? Uh, what is the defect rate uh, for Six Sigma? So we know the importance of Six Sigma, whether the software industry following which standard, is it CMMA or Six Sigma or which standard? So what is the defect rate? Defect rate of Six Sigma is very less. Just observe. So here, is it 1.0 defect per million lines of code? Is it 1.4 defects per million lines of code? Is it 3.0 defects per million lines of code? Is it 3.4 defects per million lines of code? The answer is 3.4 defects per million lines of code. Means the failure rate is very less. So this is about the answer is D. Uh, this is about the software engineering ISRO previous year questions and answers which we had discussed in detail, right? So just give a brief glance. What ACE offers? ACE online. So GATE, ESC, PSU, SSC, RRB, banking, right? GATE, uh, quick revision courses, we have it. GATE and IS, ISRO, was it? Just now we had discussed it. And we have GATE Hindi course also, which is available. And the computer science and information technology, was it? So which was started. So that is ISRO series. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one and all.